Hey, greetings, guys. It is I, International Master John Bartholomew. Welcome to another Banter Blitz. It is Saturday, October 26, 2019. I'm going to play an hour and a half of Blitz against premium members on Chess24. Three minute or five minute, feel free to challenge me. My username is just John Bartholomew, all one word. And we're going to get this party started. Hope you guys are all doing well. All right, who do we have in the queue? Who's on deck? I already have 12 challenges. Let's start at the bottom. Nickname Master, you are first up. Let's jump right in. 2,000 rated. Good luck. Thanks to everyone watching on YouTube, Twitch, Chess24, Facebook. Let's play D4, D5. The London system. I like to play C5 against the London. This is my preferred way of handling this. Take on D4. Played a game in this last time, as I recall. Let's play knight f6 here. I like capturing on d4 right away just to remove any chance that white can take on c5. Some may consider that a bit conservative, but I feel pretty comfortable with this pawn structure. If you play the queen's gambit declined uh, exchange variation from the white side in the QGD, you'll probably like this structure because it's essentially the same thing. Okay, and queen here. Now, should I play bishop d6? Bishop d6 is rather interesting. I'm going to try it. Dare white to take this pawn on b7. I remember examining this pawn sack about a year and a half ago and concluding that black has interesting play. Good to see everyone here. Just checking the various chats. Hello, Finn on YouTube. Also, Philip and Dr. Dyer. Who else we got here? Cobra, Mictal. Good to see you. Kaz, hello. And bishop back to g3. Okay, so white plays it safe. He's not going to take me up on that pawn offer. All right, let's play rook b8 in that case. I'll look to play b5 in the future. Hello, topper Harley. Knight h4. He really wants this light score bishop. Well, I can't give him that bishop without a fight, so let's go here. He could try to chase it down, trade on d6, h3, g4, but that entails a weakening of the white king side. So we'll see if he's committed to that plan. Yeah, thanks again, Topper Harley. Feel free to challenge me to three or five minute, up to you. All right, and he's going to do it. Brave guy. I'm never too upset to see this in these structures. I play the Slav a lot, and you see this quite frequently, but I feel like these compact positions, especially in blitz chests, are a little easier for black to play. Here, knight takes g4 as a threat, so, okay, bishop there. Now, I wonder I wonder if it makes sense to delay castling, because I have this nice pressure against h3. Maybe coming here with the queen is a little pesky. Let's just see how he reacts to that. If he castles queen side, I can play queen takes f2. So it looks like an annoying move. Yeah, he does cast queen queenside. Okay, so I don't see anything wrong with queen takes f2 here. Snatch a pawn, and yeah, looks completely healthy. Let's do it. He'll probably play bishop b5. Now he is threatening bishop takes c6, so maybe castles at this point for me. Let's do it. So the f-pawn, he could claim that he's sacrificed it in order to clear some lines, but I think my king is perfectly safe. If he chases me with a rook now... Let's say rook d to f1. I'm going to play queen. Where do I want to put this queen? Queen e3, rook f3 is a little annoying. Although, no, nah, that's that's okay, I think. Rook f3, queen g5 with an eye towards playing knight to e4. I can live with that. Hello to Chris on YouTube, says, hello, John, glad to be watching you live and finally able to contribute to distracting you from playing. Yes, feel free to distract me. <laughs> I need the time management practice. I really do. Always looking to work on that. How long is the stream going, stream going to be? Ask Finn. It is going to be an hour and a half stream. Rook h2, mysterious. What is this move about? Just defending the knight, I suppose. 
Okay, let's jump right in. Occupy the center. Be nice to get a knight takes d4 shot, although I don't see that happening anytime soon. Any TV recommendations, asked Suki Ray. You know, I've been slacking. Oh, knight takes d4. Knight takes d4 looks super strong here. Rook coming to c8. I've been slacking on my TV viewership. Or show viewership. I mean, I've never been one to sink that much time to it anyways, but I've been very busy lately. I've not had much time for that. Okay, queen d3. Hmm. Just trade and take d2. And then pull my knight back. Probably the safest thing to do. Almost seems like there should be a tactic here, but I'm not seeing it because my queen is under attack. So I think I got to take. Let's swap. Yeah, just take here. So this is two pawns. I'll pull the knight back to c6. He might have a little bit of an initiative against my king. He's probably going to try h4, h5, some plan like that. But I feel like I should be able to shut it down pretty easily. Knight coming to e5 looks annoying for him. Yeah, good square for this piece. Pressure d3 options to jump into c4. h4 can be met by knight takes g4. Think about playing g5 right here. There's also check followed by knight e3 or knight takes b2, but I I like g5. Put a stop to his further pawn play over there. If he attacks my knight, I can play f6 if I want. This piece is hard to chase away from the center, so I'm going to try to keep it there. Where are you from? I am from the state of Minnesota in the U.S. The land of 10,000 lakes. It's actually more like 11,000. And the state of Wisconsin has far more lakes than Minnesota does, but don't tell uh, the Minnesotans about that. <laughs> okay, bishop back to C2. Let's just expand now. B5, looking for B4, open this baby up. Little minority attack here, using two pawns to attack three. Can you shout out? Consider yourself shouted out, Aditya. <laughs> hey Matt, thank you for subscribing since 2015. It's a long time. Mm. H4. Desperate move. I mean, I have my pick of which pawns to take. I guess his idea is if takes, he's going to play g5. And then if I were to take, he has bishop h7. I think I can just win in that endgame. I'm going to take this guy. I could play f5 here too if I want to be super safe. But I kind of like taking, allowing bishop h7. It's a deflection. Take, we trade everything on f8. My pawns are so fast there though. That looks fun. Let's do it. Maybe I shouldn't pre-move that. If he for some reason played bishop b3, that would be a, pre a bad pre-move. Okay. <laughs> uh, take. So he blundered his rook. I thought he was going to go bishop h7. So, yeah, I think even though he wins the exchange here, I have four pawns and a knight for the exchange. I was just going to play h3. Yeah, let's say he plays rook f2 here. Pawn g4. These pawns are too strong. Knight's also in jumping range. Okay, nickname master, thanks for the game. I believe h3 and g4 was too weakening there. So, if you're going to pursue a plan like that, hunting down a light square bishop, I think you want to do it a little bit earlier. So when I played bishop d6, maybe take, take, then knight h4. Then you don't have to waste time playing bishop g3. This is definitely an interesting pawn stack, though. If you guys are interested in a dynamic way to play against the English within this structure, which admittedly can be dry sometimes, but this is a way to mix it up. And if you search your database, there's some games that go like this, where black actually gives up castling rights and is down a pawn, but they have two bishops, Potential for an attack on really both the king side and the queen side here. White's queen is a little misplaced. 
White needs to complete their development. Some interesting games. Shirov has played this before. Thanks for the game, Nickname Master. Suki Ray, you're up. Good luck. I like your avatar, Suki Ray. It's nice. You got the canoe in the water. Mm. Let's play Knight F6. I f I'm feeling Nimzo y, if allowed. Bishop B4. Okay, Knight F3, flexible move. Let's play a little Nimzo QID hybrid. Bishop f4, all right. No nonsense development from white, but I think these situations are kind of nice to play. For black, I get the pressure on c3. Very likely I'm going to play bishop take c3 check coming up, double up the pawns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's take now. Play d6. If you guys are looking for a current Nimzo resource, we just recently published on Chessable a lifetime course, lifetime repertoire by FIDE master Daniel Barish and international master Christoph Selecki, who is also a Banter Blitz regular. And it's a complete repertoire for black on the Nimzo and the Rogozin variation, which is if white plays knight f3, going for bishop b4. Knight f3 on move three, that is. Okay, castles. It's castle as well. See, if I could get these positions every time out of the Nimzo, I would incorporate this opening into my repertoire. <laughs> Problem is, white has a lot of ways to avoid it that you need to be well-versed in. But I like playing with this structure. This is fun. Okay, so knight d2 makes sense. White's usually trying to play f3 and win back some center control. I'm trying to think if I can play g5 here. G5, maybe he'll play bishop takes e4, huh? Probably will. Hmm. So I can reinforce. I can just take on d2 and then play knight f6, let's say. Let's do that. Bring the knight here. Very likely he'll play this f3 move. Might go queen e7 followed by e5. Rookie one. Yeah, let's go queen e7. And bishop g5. Okay. So now e5 is met by bishop takes f5. So it seems like it may be a good time to play h6 and kind of force him to trade. Hmm. I don't know, though. This is where my inexperience in these structures could potentially show. Let's play h6. Just try to get him to take. He backs up. Okay, he's being stubborn. He allows g5. But maybe g5 doesn't do a whole lot for me, is the argument. Mm, I'm going to play it anyways. Could play knight e4, but I'd like to avoid the opposite color bishop situation if possible. h5 is interesting. Again, I'd like to play e5, but f5 hangs. Maybe bishop e4? Let's do that. And if he backs his bishop off to e2, maybe then e5, finally. Although my bishop could potentially get a little shut in. Okay, h4. Let's take and play the knight into e4. Looks awkward for this bishop on g3. Take with a pawn if he takes back. Hello, Ganesh, and also David Moss. Hello, David. Regular viewer there. What am I drinking? I'm drinking some decaffeinated Earl Grey tea. You guys can see that. Probably not. I've had a couple coffees already today. Probably going to go back to the coffee in a little bit. But for now, some decaffeinated tea. So my king appears exposed, but how is white supposed to attack? 
It's hard. Probably should play bishop h2 and go for f3. It's about the only productive thing I see to do for white. Topper Harley says, this is a Simon Williams position. Mm. My king seems a little too safe for Simon's taste. <laughs> yeah, no Starbucks today at the moment. Hello to Kramnik student. Yeah, that was a dangerous pre-move in the last game. The split second where I pre-moved king h7. Okay, d5. So you usually want to keep things closed in this situation. So e5 would be my default move. And I see no reason not to play that. So let's do it. The basic problem for white here is at this point, it's hard for him to play f3. Because of knight takes g3. So that's why I think he should play bishop h2 and try for f3 later. But I still don't like it for him. You see all these pawns connected on dark squares against his bishop. Not too hot. Maybe I can try to mate him on the h-file. King g7, rook h8. Double up. Kaz says, decaf tea is the drink of choice for my 8-year-old. It's not too bad. Yeah, all of the tea I have in my house right now is decaf or herbal tea. I'm just going to pursue this plan. I don't see what queen c2 really does. It doesn't change anything as far as I'm concerned. I don't see what that does either. Overprotecting c3. Okay. Looks like he's going to try to bail with his king. That's maybe the only thing to do at this point. I could play my queen over to h5 in order to block that. Yeah. Cut off the bailout. And again, you'd love to play f3, but it's going to drop the bishop, so no dice. So next, I'm going to play queen g4 and threaten rook down to h1. Unless there's some more elegant way to do this. I could play queen h1 and queen takes g2, but I don't like that near as much. You can play rook g1 at that point. Yeah, let's just do this. Oh, and this is checkmate. Yeah, I was starting to get very cramped around Suki Ray's king. Thanks for the game, Suki Ray. He says, thanks, man. Big fan. Appreciate it. So I think you got to play f3 sooner in this setup. You had the right idea with knight d2, but I believe right around here, f3 and try for an eventual e4. Otherwise, very tough to free your position. So thank you for the game. Next. Next we have Chiron, 2301. Good luck. Let's play e4. Indian tea is the best. Mm. Albink likes Earl Grey and Dejeuling tea. Don't know if I've had Dejeuling before. The Sicilian. All right. Always a key question, what to do against the Sicilian. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll go into the open. Are we going to have a Sveshnikov? Very likely. This is another opening that Kristoff is working on at the moment. He has a course coming out on the Magnus Sicilian. Because Magnus has been playing the Sveshnikov a lot in the past year, since his World Championship match. This is the line that I played against the Sveshnikov for a long time. I don't think it's the theoretically most challenging line. But it provides a nice strategic foundation for white. So let's go here. Just playing to control the d5 square. And now I will play... Nah, let's castle first. But usually this knight is coming to the e3 square sooner or later. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go here. Probably he's going to play b4. Because then I don't really want to play... He takes. Okay. I was expecting b4. But yeah, on, on b4, I don't really want to take because I'm going to surrender control of d4. So I'm probably going to keep that pawn on c3 and let him take it. I'm a little surprised by bishop takes on uh, 
on e3 though usually black tries to keep the pair of bishops so let's just play here looking to attack this guy rook fd1 coming if bishop b7 i was thinking bishop f3 let's bring this rook over maybe i can keep this rook defending f2 just in case he plays for some sort of f5 move although he's probably going to have to play rook d8 now huh Maybe bishop b7 still? Hmm. Tough question which rook to use there. Okay, now how to increase the pressure? c4, he can play b4. Nothing seems to be doing there. a4 is interesting. Idea takes knight c4. Seems a little precarious though. I don't know that I like that. Okay, I changed my mind a little bit. I'm going to go queen c2. Maybe try to double up the rooks on the file. Mm -hmm. Not worried about bishop takes a2 because that would run into b3 for the time being. Ah, he can break. Breaker, breaker. All right, let's go here. D5 might have been well-timed, though. Let's take him on this pawn. Also could have traded twice and taken on B5, but queen takes E4 seems like a more natural move, especially for blitz. F6, solid. Can I grab this pawn on B5? Trade, trade, take... He'll probably get some counterplay there, but man, I am tempted. I'm going to do it. I'm going to attempt to take. My knight is controlling the d1 square. He can play bishop takes a2, but then his bishop is a little ways from home. Now, do I play c4 or something else? c4 might strictly be the only way to try to punish him here. Although I'm allowing some counterplay if I do that to be sure. He can try queen down to d2. Ah. Again, I'm going to give it a shot. He's been playing pretty confidently and fast so far, but let's see if we can turn the tables and grab the initiative. Just trying to mess with his coordination. Queen into d2. Okay, so I figured he might have issues with a check and then queen e8 against this. But first, I may need to make some luft for my king. Some sort of g3 type move. Unless there's a win immediately. Ooh. Okay, check a8, king f7, bishop e8, king e6. I have queen a6, queen d6, bishop f7. I trade queens on d6, and then I play c5. Does that work? I think that works. There's also a queen e8, but I didn't see a follow up here. Check. And now queen a6 after king e6, which seems forced. Otherwise, king f8, bishop g6. So check. Queen d6 is forced. And then I'm going to play bishop f7, try for a deflection. King d7 is forced. Trade, check. And. I'm going to pick up this bishop on a2. He gets a pawn for it, but that is it. You could also play queen takes a5 here. <clears throat> but with the time situation, let's not get too greedy. Okay, so should be winning here. But, got to manage time. Always got to manage that clock. Attacking this pawn. And now let's go after these pawns. All right. Yeah, queen d2 is too reckless. It just, it's one of these positions that 
there must be something here for white, it seems. And I also have moves like playing g3 or something. That was a backup move if queen a8 check wasn't working out right away. But this is all pretty forced. Yeah, and wins material. So Chiron, thanks for the game. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Prom Knight. All right, let's play Pop Terrors next. And then Kramnik Student. Stick with E4 again. I think Chiron equalized out of the opening. I think after he plays D5, he should be fine. The Caro, all right. What to play against the Caro Khan? I usually play advanced variation, but I'm going to switch it up. This one. All right, knight g5 is a critical move here. Even though you move the knight again, this is considered to be one of the main tests of this variation. And now bishop d3. As made famous by the game Deep Blue versus Kasparov. Thanks, David. Thanks, Mana Culture and Blue Guitarist. Uh, knight here? Yeah. Usually bishop d6 is played. And then queen e2. Ilya on YouTube is wondering if people are stream sniping John's playing while uh, John's plans while playing. Yeah, there's always the possibility of stream sniping, right? As a streamer, you just have to have to take that into account. There is a bit of a delay. It's not a very long delay, but there's slight delay. I have a cut on my head. I saw this this morning when I woke up, and I have no idea how this happened. Okay, H six. Yeah, now let's play knight e4. I sleep with a sleeping mask, so I kind of wonder if the the edge of the mask got it. But no clue how that occurred. Okay, now here, queen g4 is the critical move, but I really don't know that theory. So I'm not really inclined to play it. I'm just going to play bishop d2. I know this is a bit of a lame move. But, again, I'm not completely sure about the theory, so I don't feel like risking it. Karakhan's a good opening. The Karakhan and the Scandi are cousins, so... I gotta like that opening. I'm becoming Harry Potter? Nice. Needs to be a little bit more lightning bolt shaped. Sometimes bed spiders fancy themselves as brain surgeons, says cats. <laughs> okay, castles. Um, let's play bishop a6. I think trading the light square bishops is usually a pretty good idea, because black's going to play c5 pretty soon here. I don't pretend to have any advantage here, though. If it's an edge, it's pretty minimal. And now maybe maybe just sidestep. Topper Harley says the Carol Con is my favorite opening. I should play it more often. Seems to be holding up well theoretically. Those advanced variations, they can get sharp sometimes. I've just noticed over the past few years that the theory in the advanced variation has been accelerating. Okay, let's centralize. If I get some time, I'm going to look into that opening. I think having a, a recent Karo Khan chessable course would be pretty nice. There's one by international master Tom Bartel, but it's a little bit dated at this point. Okay, takes maybe bishop c3 here. Let's see how he reacts to that. Pretty overt threat. Take on c5, take g7. Let's see what he does. Usually you want your pawn up on c4, so I'm kind of playing it without that. Hmm, knight f6, okay. Yeah, that does make sense. I could take and take f6, but... 
Well, that'll give him some weaknesses to worry about. So I think I'm going to do that. Ah, but knight d2 runs into queen takes g2 here. So maybe I got to play this position a little bit slower. Let's play a3. This is one of these useful moves you play when there's a lull in the activity. Ah, modernized Caro. Yes, that's right. We do have that on there as well. That is the book by Daniel Fernandez, I believe. Okay. I want to dare him to take g2. I'm going to dare him to do it, to play queen takes g2. I have not really calculated this, but f7 is loose. d7 would be hanging over his head like a knight d7 type move. Let's see what he wants to play here. Bishop d4. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. That might be a good move. Ah, but I have knight takes f7 here. Knight f7, queen f7, rook takes d4 wins a pawn, maybe? But it looks like the thing to do. Can I switch the move order up somehow? I could also... Nah, this is going to be the best move order. He will have queen c7 at the end of the line, and then he can go take h2, but his coordination looks highly suspect there. I guess I would have, yeah, queen takes d4, queen takes h2, queen d7. I think that's going to be bad for him. He sees what I'm up to. Hyper-accelerated dragon as black as my weapon, says Chess Pagal. Try it if you get a chance. That's a good point. You know, I've been looking into the dragon a little bit lately. I will very likely be collaborating on a dragon course in early 2020. So I'm looking forward to that. Check. So queen c7 and now take. And queen takes h2. Yeah, I was thinking this queen d7 move. Funnily enough, I can play rook takes e6 here. It's sort of a similar tactic. Take queen d8, king b7, queen d7, and then go take. But I think queen d7 is more promising. What will he do? Rook c8, probably? I might only be up a pawn eventually, but that's fine. That's about the max I think I was getting with this combination. And his king looks more unsafe than mine. Queen h5. Hmm. So if we trade e6, he has queen d1 and queen takes c2 at the end. Understood. So king a2, maybe this. Just tuck the king. I like it. Another useful move. So queen d1 check is the issue in the end. Let's just remove that obstacle. And now I'm going to try to lift my rook to bother him. Rook c3. He's a little bit stuck here. For the time being, e5 is a good move. I was just wondering about that. E5. Okay. It's actually even material still. I thought I was somehow getting something out of this, but apparently not. Hmm. Well, I don't want to trade, so I'm going to go back here now. This seems like a change of opinion. I really thought I would win a pawn out of that, but nope was not to be. All right, let's stay active. Rook g8, queen takes e5. I guess I'm up a pawn in the end. Let's go here, maybe? No, nah, let's stay active, attacking the pawn on e5. Mm-hmm. He could have played rook g8 on the last move. Oh, that was a blunder, though. He was defending that very well. Now, though, this is losing. Too much. Let's keep it simple. Take. Take. 
If I can get behind the pawn, that would be great. Although not mandatory. I'm just going to make a little nice nest for my king. Okay, now I could get behind the pawn. I will do that. I don't care about the A pawn. Okay, thanks for the game, Popter. That was a good one. Yeah, I did not want to plant a uh, pawn as I was planning, but let me see this position. This feels like a critical position right here. Rook takes e6, rook takes e6, queen takes e6. Always has this queen d1, queen takes c2 move. My king is kind of open. I can't take h6 because he has perpetual ideas. Maybe black is okay here. Feels like it shouldn't be the case. The other thing I was mentioning was, at this point, playing a move like rook takes e6 and doing this. But I feel like this is pretty similar. Let's say he plays king b8 here, take. He could take here at the end. There might be some liquidation. I just wasn't sure I could win this position. So, interesting game. Next opponent, Kramnik student. Good luck. Yep, my pleasure, Popter. All right, first Scandi of the day. Let's do it. If anyone has any team Scandi emotes in the Twitch chat, now's the time to use them. <laughs> okay, let's play Queen A5. Still waiting for me to crush play Magnus 7. You're right. I've been slacking on that series. All right, knight e5. I'm going to play bishop e6. This looks like an awkward move, but if you play bishop f5, white could play g4. So I think it's reasonable to play this. There is a game, Kasparov as white versus Vichy Anand as black in this line from the PCA World Championship 1993, I think. And Kasparov surprisingly didn't really get an edge here. So it's an interesting line. Okay, knight e2. Good night, Marcus. Thanks for tuning in. Hmm. I could castle queenside here. Is one option. I don't really want to take on e5 yet. I feel like it's not the right time to do it. Bishop f5 is also an interesting option. Maybe I will play that. Good way to block the f-pawn, because white... May look to play f5 at some point, so. I'm okay with this structure. You get some nice holds on the center. e4 and d5 are pretty well under black's control for now. e6. Let's see what happens here. He might play knight h5. I don't think the knight stands too well on g3 in the long term, so I wouldn't be surprised to see knight h5 here. And perhaps rook g8. This might be a decent way to make an attacking gesture against this king. And I'm probably going to castle queenside later if I get the chance. Just defend the bishop. I just want to stop his queen from coming to h5. You know, if I were to swap, queen comes in and he'd be attacking f7. So didn't quite like that. Yes, only playing premium users today with this banter blitz, as always. Okay, bishop e3. Mm -hmm. Maybe bishop h8. Unveil the rook. I could see queen d5 being a possibility. Especially in the case of something like knight c4. b4. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so now I'm definitely thinking about queen d5. Returning to the rightful Scandi square, threatening mate on g2. He's got to be a little careful here. Moves like queen f3 are losing after knight takes h5. That comes with check. Which way do I want to take here? 
Knight takes an angle for e4, or bishop takes and just try to eliminate his knight. I feel like knight takes might be the thing to do. Let's do that. Queen e2. Okay, knight e4 comes to mind. He's going to push c4. I think that's pretty clear. Let's play queen e4 to kind of circumvent that. Circumvent c4 with tempo at least. And I'm looking to jump my knight to d5 next. Play on those light squares. He's got a bad bishop locked in by his pawns. Still a little bit hindered by the fact that I can't castle without dropping f7. But we'll work our, ourselves out of this. Thanks, Akash. He was asking about books on calculation a little earlier. So one course I've been working through on chessable specifically is the woodpecker method. Also, tune your chess tactics antenna is a great course. I've recommended many times. C4. Okay, so that's probably a decent move. It controls the d5 square. So I totally sympathize with that move. What about knight g4, though? Knight g4. Interesting move. I'm going to play it. Try to attack e3. And I think he has to take it with his knight. I believe he must. Now let's take here. And I'm threatening bishop takes d4. Also, I remove the obstacle to castling queenside. So I'm ready to do that. Which will hit d4 another time. Also gives me the option of bringing the rook over. So things are looking good here. Hello to Sefer. Trojan says, I also studied the Scandi recently, but I was surprised that Hammer said in his video series that Queen D8 is the worst option for black. Oh, I'm pretty sure we can come up with worse options on move three specifically. Queen E4 is pretty bad. <laughs> okay, Queen F2. Almost feels like I have a tactic here. I can take G2 and then take E3, but I'm not totally feeling that. Let's just castle. That was kind of my default move anyways, so attack d4. He'll probably play rook d1 and try to hold here. Man, really getting close to the point where it feels like a tactic is going to get unleashed on him. But I'm not seeing it. So just double and play h5. Let's do it. Try to lever open the position, h4. As Archimedes said, give me a lever long enough and a place to stand, and I will move the earth. Uh, h4 right away or take first? I feel like h4 right away is stronger because it's a little harder for him to defend. Ah, this is a nice variation. If he plays bishop f2 here, I can play e3 or I can take first. Let's take first. Yeah, he has to take with the bishop. He's playing well in defense here. e3 now might give him some tactical issues. I think. Threatening e2. If rook e1, I have rook takes f4, rook takes d4. Or bishop takes d4. Yeah, so this pawn's an issue. Yeah, I win the exchange here. The pins, man. Benefiting from both of the pins. All right. Thank you for the game, Cranwick student. Maybe you could have played f5 right here after knight bd7. I was kind of curious about that. That's why I played bishop f5. Part of the reason I played bishop f5 on the next move. Just to disallow that possibility. Yeah, I think this position is just kind of nice for black. I've got pressure. Got that bad bishop on e3. Thank you for the game. Onam. 
You are next. Hello, Onam. I remember playing you last time. Let's do this. Uh, let's play Knight F3 this time. John, why do you have a scar on your forehead? I was saying I woke up like this. I don't know why. I just noticed it this morning. And I wasn't drinking last night or anything. <laughs> Queen F3 is a poor Scandi, yes. That is true, Kaz. Scandi time last game, indeed. Yes. Okay, I'll play bishop g5 here. This is actually my usual move. Just leads to some nice independent possibilities. I'll play queen c2. Delaying the development of the knight gives you the knight bd2 option, which sometimes I make use of here. By the way, I will plug my upcoming match against uh, David Anton Guijaro in the Banter Blitz Cup. We don't have a firm date for it, but it's going to be, I think, probably the first or second week of November. So it's going to come up pretty quickly here. And it's especially um, interesting for me because, I mean, he's such a strong player and he had a fantastic finish at the Isle of Man tournament, which recently completed. So I'm gonna really have my work cut out for myself. Okay, there's some like weird light going on here. I'm gonna fix that, guys. Let's see if this helps. Okay, so I played the knight to d2. I don't think it's that impressive for me in this position, but let's see what happens. Let's play bishop d3. I'm also way down on the clock. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I'm just seeing the replay of myself. Uh, like getting up and changing the blinds there. It looks like the sun is rising and setting. It's pretty funny. Okay, knight g6. Now I'm going to go knight e5 and try to squeeze him. Prop it up with f4. If he plays knight g6, which I think there's a very good possibility he will, prop it up with f4. That makes it kind of awkward for black as far as releasing the pressure. I think black's better off trying to take c4 or playing b6 earlier and trying to get their, their uh, light square bishop out. Okay, let's take this way. Oh, good to hear, Tam Crude. Which tournament were you at? Mm -hmm. Knight d5. This is reasonable. Trying to free himself. All right, let's take. And I'm going to play a3 next, I think. Stop any knight b4 business. Yeah, I had like a target on my head, right? With that little beam of, little dot of sunlight. Uh, A5. Let's play rook C1. So going for the, the strangle here. It's still hard to get this bishop out. He can put it on D7, but his prospects are not great there. Knight G6, okay. Kind of want to play F4, but I'm a little worried about B5. Leaves e3 tender, so let's take. And then I'm going to play knight here. But eventually I think I would like to play f4. Sooner or later. There also might be tactics here or here. Got to watch out for those. Knight f7. Bishop takes g6. Tactics like that.
queen h4. Hmm. This is where I start to think about these tactics. Such as knight f7, because I get a rook and two pawns, but it releases a lot of the pressure, so it may not be worth it. I'm going to go, this is kind of a weird move, but I'm going to go here. Trying to overprotect e3 in preparation for f4. Definitely have the time to do this, so. Ooh, man. Really feels like he's asking for it here. <laughs> Again, I can take and bishop g6. Just not quite right yet. I got to hurry. So let's go. We're going f4 next, I think. Or maybe e4, then f4. Yeah, maybe e4, then f4. Creates a few more problems, probably. You have to be careful in these positions because you can just fall in love with how good your setup looks. And then you look down at your clock and you have 30 seconds left. Time to attack. Now I'm going to play rook takes f4 if he takes. If he doesn't take, we'll figure it out. Okay, now rook h4 is a big threat. That would trap his queen. Knight takes f7 and e5 also on tap here. He's not going to make it. Okay, thanks for the game, Onam. So what can be said about this one? As I was saying, I don't think my setup out of the opening was that great. If it were me, I would have played something like b6 right around here, I think. b6, bishop b7. Maybe I could take on d5 and try to use the c file somehow, but even here I feel like you're doing all right. It's a little bit cramped, but you should be able to survive this. Sometimes rook e8 is not that helpful of a move, even though it does prepare the f8 square for the knight. You know, here too, probably you're better off playing a b6 type move to free yourself. Thank you for the game. Let's play with Mictal. No, not Mictal. Kaz, you're up next. Mictal is after that. So three plus two game. Thanks for giving me the increment, Kaz. <laughs> Uh, let's play d4 this time. Topper Harley, let's see if you're in the list. Yes, you are. Yep. You're third in line. Okay, so this is the Queen's Gambit Decline Exchange variation I was talking about in the very first game of the stream. I've been playing this line a long time as white. This is one of the first variations you learn as a d4 player. I prefer delaying the development of this knight to have options of going here or here. Yeah, knight e2 is the more aggressive one. You can try for the f3 and e4 plan, so I think I'm going to go for that. Okay, h6, let's back this off. Usually pretty happy to see h6 because in my experience, it's a little weakening for black. Let's castle. Okay, so here I may switch my attention to the queen side and trying to do a minority attack. Rook b1, b4, b5, look to create a weakness in black's pawn structure. Because with this queen on e7 constantly eyeing up this e3 pawn, it may be tough to... Uh, push f3 and e4, which is the principal plan when you're playing knight e2. Goody, you have to be premium to challenge. Those are the banter blitz rules. On my streams, I do uh, play all viewers. If I'm doing a viewer stream, which admittedly I have not for several months. But yes, for official banter blitzes, got to be premium. 
Tam Crude says Kasparov was the master of the F3 and E4 setup in this opening. Yes, and you know who he learned it from was Botvinnik. His teacher. Botvinnik is the godfather of that plan for white. Okay, now here you can go a4 and b5, but you can also try knight a4 and knight c5. I think in this case, I'm going to try directly for a4 and b5. Because I don't see a reason to delay it, but I have often played the knight into c5 before going for this. Can reposition a little bit, because black can play b5 here if they absolutely want to stop you from playing b5. So that's one argument in favor of playing knight a4 first, is that your knight has a better chance of getting into the c5 square. Guaranteed chance if you play knight a4. Whereas if black plays b5 here, he can try to claim that this knight is a little out of the game. Okay, but he's going to allow me to do this. I'm pretty happy here. This is like textbook minority attack. Ooh, but this move is not justified because he doesn't have enough defenders. If his knight was on g7, that would be fine. Ah, and he just resigned. Okay. Kai's got his wires crossed a little bit here. Yeah, bishop f5, which is, again, very common if black were to do this. Then play bishop f5 with a protected. Had the game gone like this, I probably would have done something such as uh, a capture on c6, trade the pawns, and then try to hammer away at this guy. Okay, thanks for the game. Next, we have McTall. I might have to reload on T here in a second, guys. I also have to use the bathroom, so let's play E4. Ah, oh, no worries. He says, sorry, got the move order wrong. It happens. If you want to see an embarrassing example of that, that ended up uh, with me losing the game, check out my last YouTube video I posted. <laughs> McTall, you there, buddy? Let's do this thing. I hope you didn't step out for a moment. See, McTall was, wasn't expecting Kaz to lose that fast. So he probably he's probably getting some tea right now. And he's scrambling. Maybe he's hearing my voice from several rooms away. Scrambling to get back to his mouse to play his first move. <laughs> okay. Let's abort this one. McTall, I'll try to get you in because I think you just stepped out for a moment. Uh, actually, I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick, guys, and reload on my T. Be back in like less than two minutes. Okay. Let's see. Are you back, Mick? Don't want to mess up the order. 
Uh, I don't see your challenge again. But like I said, I'll try to swing back to you. SP Castro, let's do this. I got some more Earl Grey. Good to go. Did you see how Geary won versus Anton today? Great game. Is that the game with Bishop H3? Because I saw a couple diagrams posted of that, but all I know is that Geary was playing black in that game. It looks quite nice. Okay, London system, but I think against G6, Bishop G7, black has some, some nice play because E5 can happen pretty quickly. How do you take your tea, John? Sugar or honey? No, just straight up. I take my coffee with some cream a lot of times, but for tea, just straight up. Mm, let's play knight e7. Try to get the knight to f5. We need to send out a search party for Miktal. Kramnik student says Mick is not to be seen. He is either logged out or away for a long time. He would surely chat if he was around. Kaz said Mick was probably sickened by my play. He's, he's just like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, should I castle and play for f5, e4? Kind of tempted to play f5 immediately, to be honest. But let's castle first. Seems like the prudent thing to do. That was the bishop h3 game. Okay. Cool. Good to know. H6, maybe? Uh, always a question how to deal with this move. Now if I play f5, though, it's not as appealing because he can trade and play bishop c4 check. Uh, don't like that. Let's play h6. h5, g5. Kind of weak on this diagonal. Maybe I should have played f5 prior to castling, but too late now. Nayap on YouTube says, Black tea forever. Is this my anti-London? Eh, it's a line I've dabbled with a few times, yeah. Honestly, not sure how great it is. It's a little suspect. Like, I'm going to take a, a risk here and open up my king. But at least I'm being consistent. Hello, Ghost Recon on YouTube. Do you think you can beat Pichot? You mean um, Grandmaster Pichot? I don't know when I'm supposed to play him. I'm playing David Anton in the Banter Blitz Cup. Didn't Magnus play Pichot? And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing his name. John, if it's possible, please tell me again what's the book for calculation you suggested. Uh, one of them was The Woodpecker Method, which is for more advanced players, I would say. And also, Tune Your Chess Tactics Antenna is one I really like. That's a good general purpose calculation, sense of danger book. Okay, I can play f4 here and trap that bishop. He conveniently took away the, the h2 retreat. Just scanning to see if there's some sort of tactical issue, but I don't think there is. Yeah, he must have played knight h2 to try to avoid the e4 fork, but... Out of the fire into the frying pan. I finally got that saying correct for once. It's been like a running joke on my streams. I've often said out of the, f the f fire into the fireplace... Okay, um, king h8 or king h7, does it matter? I think I'm going to play king h7. And if bishop takes g6, I even have rook f6. Followed by knight takes g6. Hello, RPG. Do 
you train only hobby players, John, or do you have some serious talents as students as well? Yeah, I have, have coached some pretty high-rated players, Andrew Tang being one of the most notable ones. But for now, most of my students are amateur players, yes. Yeah, Andrew Tang does have a higher ELO than me, which is cool. Okay, castles. Can I trap this queen? That is my first thought here. I don't necessarily have to take, although there's no real downside to taking, but can I trap the queen? Like knight e5, he does have b3 to go back to. Maybe knight e5 and just take on d3 after that, huh? Let's do that. Just get rid of his light score bishop. Could get fancy and play bishop g4 after queen e2. <laughs> Thanks, Kaz. <laughs> uh, take. And let's gain a tempo. He's probably like, John, just take my bishop already. Get it over with. Oh, Hagar, you should jump in for a game. But honestly, we might not get to you because there's quite a few challenges. This is only going about another 30 minutes. I must be hungry. My, str my stomach is just rumbling at the moment. Take d4. Yeah, get those bishops working. Definitely not afraid of queen takes b7 in view of rook b8. And John sacked some skin on his head. Nice. I think you said out of the fire and into the frying pan. I did say that, yeah. <laughs> out of the frying pan into the fire. Is that the correct order? See, I got it wrong again. Never fails. Just when I thought I had it down pat, I have to start practicing it in the mirror. Pull this back. Are beginners allowed to challenge? Yes, anyone with a premium membership on Chess24 can challenge. OG breadcrumb. Thank you guys all for tuning in today. Really good turnout on this Saturday. Okay, knight e4. I want this bishop participating again. Let's play bishop c6, and then I'm going to put this knight on f5 next, most likely. Just slowly converting this game up a piece. Yes, that is a move order subtlety. The frying pan and the fire. All right, I will take. And then I think I will play this move. I don't want this pawn yet. I want to take it with the queen. If f7, I will play bishop takes f3, I think. Just get rid of that knight. No reason to let it jump to g5 and make your life a little a little tricky. All right. So we're going to get this game. Thanks for the game, SP Castro. So you got your wires crossed when I played for f5. Because e4 was the threat, and I see why you played this move. To avoid e4 forking both pieces, but it allowed f4, unfortunately. So, you know, I think here, maybe start with a capture on e5. 
just to clear some lines. And you always have bishop c4 check in this case. That's one thing that capture kind of helps because here, if you play bishop c4, I can play d5. But yeah, maybe throw in this capture and then decide what to do. Bishop c4 check. Maybe even pawn e4 is reasonable. Your bishop gets buried, but I don't think this is the end of the world for you. Something like that. Okay, Topper, you're up. Oh, Topper's 24.97. Okay. Let's play d4. Hello, Bruno Rolla. Okay. Sefer was asking how he can prepare for his university's rapid tournament. It's 15 plus 2. First time he's played OTB. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to play a little bit of OTB chess for practice if you can. Let's play a3 here. Idea, take with the queen and then knight c3, e4. In addition to playing that time control online. I would actually even consider playing 15-0 online. So try to train with a little bit faster of a time control than you're actually going to have in the tournament. That way it, it may not seem as fast. I mean, the difference will be subtle. You probably won't even notice it, but having that two-second increment OTB will be nice, although that is still pretty quick. I've looked at this before, all this stuff, and I can't remember how this line goes. Was I supposed to play rook d1? I don't know. I'm just going to castle. Now he can play bishop g4 if he wants. And it may be a little tough to break down. I guess I'll do this. If take, do I take c6? Hmm. Probably not. Let's just take with the bishop. And when that knight jumps in, now I have to work a little harder to break this down. Hmm. I think I've made a couple strategic mistakes already. This knight could be very annoying going forward, but we'll see. See if I can slowly chip away at it. Maybe rook e1, knight b5. Basically need to trade my knight for his knight at some point. Hey, Sterlinguini. Good to catch you as well. Hello to Mr. Crumbler. Kramnik student asked John, when you play opponents, do you make moves based on their rating? or play the same, irrespective of rating. You know, I try mostly to play the same, but no doubt, yeah, you make certain decisions based on your opponent's rating sometimes. Kind of calculated decisions, you know, against a lower rated player in a tense position, I may decide to keep the tension longer in hopes of confusing them. It's a common example. I think I'm a little bit worse here. I mean, it feels like it. All right, now I can challenge that knight. I can play knight e2. Because there's no pressure on e4, at least for the time being. So, okay, kind of helpful to get that move in. Let's take with the bishop. He's going to post this guy on c5 more than likely. And then what will I play? Queen e3, maybe? Now he plays a4 first. Okay. A4. Yeah, good move to kind of nail the b3 square. Let's go queen here. Got to create some counterplay somehow. I'm going to let his knight get into b3 if he wants. Looking for something here. This is going to be tough, though. In danger of a good knight versus bad bishop situation. You could argue that we're already there. Kaz says, I think black should have played c5 rather than cd. That was possible, although my plan would have been the same to try to eventually challenge his knight. Definitely possible, though. Could have tried 
knight d7 there as well and if there's a trade try to use the c5 square okay queen a5 interesting so i was thinking about just letting him take and trying to somehow benefit from that bishop g4 is not going to be good here bishop f1 maybe feels very passive but let's do it Because the thing is, I think the trade actually kind of helps me because I can boot his knight from c5 and my rook can invade. f5. Hmm. Attack. Okay. Well, let's take that. And I'm going to play rook c3 now. He can't double up the rooks because that would lose his queen. I don't mind seeing f5. I mean, any sort of opening of the position gives my bishop more hope in the long run. I think I would have played instead of f5, rook fc8 for black. Slowly try to milk the position. John, how difficult do you consider getting an IM title to be? Very difficult. Yeah, it's uh, and it will depend on how long you've been playing chess, of course, but it is quite difficult. You got to be dedicated to playing tournaments. I really want to take this knight. I'm so tempted. <laughs> Just get rid of that bad boy. I mean, it looks thematic here too, so. Even further reason to do it. Uh, which pawn would I take at that point though? That's the thing. Hmm. Don't know. I am going to take it, I think. And I'm going to take the b7 pawn to try to stay active with my queen. I think in a blitz game, kind of have to go for this. Okay, now if he takes b2, I have queen e6, rook f7, and maybe d6. That's the line I was calculating. Not even sure that's good for white, but it'll make him think. Ooh, he is going to let me do this. Check. I mean, d6 is awfully tempting here. Just give him the f2 pawn. Let's do that. Hmm. Feels close to something for me. Bishop c4, though, I don't know that that quite cuts it. Ah, maybe it does. I'm going to do it. If queen f6, I have queen c8. Okay, so he probably has to play rook b takes f2 here. Because this rook taking on f2 runs into queen g8 mate. Any rook move with this rook runs into queen g8 mate. So I think rook b takes f2 is force, and then I was thinking just rook takes e5. Kind of a weird position. A little precarious for both sides. My bishop's controlling f1. Not sure what I'm threatening here, but <laughs> looks awkward for both sides. Maybe I'm threatening just rook takes c5, I guess. Oh, he has this move. Did not see that. Okay, got to back off. I think he still can't take this, though. This is tense, guys. I don't know what's going on here. My bishop's trying to attack and defend. Time, time as well. I don't think there's increment in this game. G6, okay. Let us take. Mm -hmm. All right. Play for the end game now.
I'm going to go up a pawn, and he has little time. Oh, I could have taken that guy, but I didn't. Oh, multiple pawns here. All right, Topper, thanks for the game. That was intense. Yeah, this rook ending was drawn at the end. Very interesting position right about here. Rook f6, and I missed that you can try to go after the d6 pawn. I think g6 is, is definitely the correct decision. Trying to give some room for your king. Ah, maybe I should play rook e7 here, huh? This looks much stronger than what I did. Yeah, because this rook is glued to this square. Take runs into queen g8 mate. That looks decisive, doesn't it? So I'm threatening rook f7, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Yeah, topper played very well. Yeah, thanks for the game. I do think you were outplaying me at the beginning. I mean, I think with your knight there, again, I was saying during the game, probably would not have gone for f5 myself. Maybe just rook fc8 and play it strategically, but even here, I would bet that you're better after the exchange sack. All right, who's up next? Mictal? Did we find Mictal? Still don't see him here. So we're going to go with rule 1561, 2400 rated. I have a perfect record so far today, but you guys are trying. Let's play a Mm-hmm. Put the bishop on b7 ASAP. e6. Often black will be going for a quick d5 in this line. And I think I should do it here. Let's go for it. b4 followed by d5. I like these setups. And if e5, you can play your knight to h6 and try to go to f5. These feel nice. Black's pieces kind of fit together well. Bishop e7, pawn h5. Knight c6, you have good control over d4. Yeah, let's play h5. Oftentimes black will not castle or postpone castling. Hmm, any tactics on d4? None that I'm seeing yet. So let's just play the bishop out. Maybe queen b6 coming up. This is kind of a French defense on steroids. He really wants to undermine my pawns. He is not being shy about that goal. I don't know if I really want to play... Well, no, let's play a5. We'll extend it. A takes, a takes, rook takes, queen takes. I feel like I should be better on the queen side somewhat. Having bishop a6 could be handy later. Hello to Bipor. H3. Okay, let's go here. Hi, Eugene. He says, hi, this is John. <laughs> Are you still pushing for GM? At the moment, I am just not too focused on playing over the board chess. I played a couple tournaments in the past two or three months, but no GM norm tournaments on the horizon. Very dialed into work, teaching, making chessable content. Hey, Daniel. Thanks for watching live. Okay. Looks like we're going to have a trade here. Probably queen a4. Although he'll still have some existing problems with his d4 pawn. Let's now play this bishop back so it's not loose. Good to overprotect. I got this bishop a6 move lurking, so I feel like that should give him some issues. Let's take. Let's he just surrenders the d4 point. There was a lot of pressure there. It was tying him down.
Knight g5, I'll play the bishop back to e7, probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thinking about queen a6, if I offer a queen trade and I attack e2 at the end, that looks like a nice end game, actually. I think I'm going to play that. Ah, he plays queen back. Okay. I could play knight e3 if I ever want to get the bishop pair. But don't have to rush any decision like that. Hmm. Let's get a little bit closer with this queen. Still have bishop a6 in mind. Knight d4. All right. Let's go take. Something's got to give here. My instincts say take with a bishop and then queen c4, but I'm a little worried about queen a4 check still. No, but maybe I can deal with that. Let's do that. Queen a4 check, I can play bishop c6, and I can always castle. And d4 seems doomed. I really want to win this pawn, if possible. Yeah, looks tough for him to hold. Keeping my rook here is very handy because I can stop g4 for the time being. So he's probably going to do something active with his queen, like queen a7 here. But then maybe I can just castle, is what I was thinking. He can still hold that pawn, rook d1. But even there, it seems kind of tough in the long run to hold it. Because he's threatening queen b8 now. So castling at this point seems appropriate. Rook d1, and now queen e2 maybe? Queen e2 or queen c2? Maybe queen c2 so he doesn't have rook d2. Ooh, g4. Okay, take this guy. And will I take on d4 with the knight or the queen? Probably knight. So queen takes, maybe he had queen a6, for example. All right, so I bagged a pawn. Knight c2 comes to mind here. Knight b5 comes to mind. Let's go knight c2. I also have rook a8 on tap. I should not forget. So if he plays bishop c5, rook a8 could be handy. If rook c1, I can always defend the knight with a move like c3. Yeah, this seems like just a good idea. He has to play queen b6 now, and this is... Oh no, okay, is that move. Missed queen e7. Hmm. <clears throat> He's lurking. He's lurking close. Let's repeat once. It's got to go back to a7 here. How do I make progress? Queen into e2, there's rook f2 is annoying. Let's play b3. I gotta play a little faster now. Hmm. 
think I can take here. Hard for him to defend e5 in some positions now. I mean, I'm going to guess he missed queen takes g4. Yeah, take this way. I'm on e5, also defending f7. Bishop h3, I take with check, very important. Yeah, now this has got to be winning. I have d4 check. Let's play it. Looks like a no-brainer move. Okay. Check. Eh, just do everything with check. And now 93. Check. Okay. Tense one. Thanks for the game, Rui. Yeah, I'm a little biased. I, I like playing these setups as black. Your plan of undermining the queen side entirely was interesting, but it does feel like black has a lot of pressure. I mean, queen back to d1. I can see why you play knight d4, but maybe that move was a mistake. Or if you're going to play it, maybe you have to take with the pawn here. Something like this, although even here I feel like black has some pressure still. Interesting one, though. Thanks for the game. Sim says, I know you are busy, but when are these dating advice videos coming out? Well, you, you should uh, follow me on Twitter. I post some dating stuff occasionally on Twitter. Mostly my adventures on Bumble, but... <laughs> All right. Just checking to see if uh, McTall... Nope, he was just gone for good. I think this will be the last game, guys. We're already a little past time, but... I did have to get up, use the bathroom, and make some tea. So let's play one more. We'll play against Valdis. Good luck, Valdis. Let's play d4. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in today. A lot of fun, as usual. I've really been enjoying these. Thank you, Ward G. Thanks, Matt Smith and Knight C8 for the subscription on Twitch, by the way. I'm trying to monitor those a little bit. These are subscriptions to the Chess24 channel. Valdis, are you there? Paging Valdis, there he goes. He is here. All right, I'll play Knight F3. The anti-Budapest move. And now we'll play a Tori. Yeah, thank you, Mate in China. Avoiding the Budapest Gambit with this early Knight F3. <laughs> That's not... The only reason to play it, but because sometimes white can profit from having delayed c4. Okay, I like putting the bishop on e2 in these situations and typically going for c4 later. Okay, let's castle, and yeah, again, I'm going to play for c4. I think white has a bit of an edge here. Black mixing a Grunfeld and a Slav setup, kind of like a Schlechter Slav. Hello, Paul. Thank you, Bugatti Warion. Thanks for tuning in, Michael J. Okay, let's keep this bishop. If bishop f4, black had knight h5, so kind of like in one of the early games in the stream, I'm going to try to induce black to play g5. And if they want to go after my bishop, they'll at least have to weaken their king side a bit. Thanks, Cobra. See you later if you're still here. Kaz says, John's main, main dating advice is to be cautious. Always sleep with an ice pick under your pillow. <laughs> that seems a little extreme.
All right, he is going to play g5, so that's usually signaling knight h5 coming next. No, knight e4. Okay. Knight e4, trade, trade. Knight d2, I guess his idea is f5, trying to crowd the bishop. Interesting. Well, let's, let's go for that. I'm quite curious how that's going to work out. I was thinking about, after f5 here, playing f4. Now he plays knight f6. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to play c5, stake out some territory. Maybe I can use this square for my knight or my bishop later. I like the look of this for me. Expansion now, b4. This bishop's very secure. There's no knight h5. My bishop's covering. So maybe expand. Could even play just b5 directly here. or a4 if I want to be able to take. Feels like he's getting ready to move this knight and play f5, huh? Maybe that's what he's up to. Well, let's play b5 then. Try to get some attacking pressure against his queen side. He takes, hmm. Okay, is he gonna go knight h5? which is what I thought he would do earlier, but he never did it. I think I'll, in that case, I'll play queen b3. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's bring this guy back. Cover h5, knight c4 is a potential idea now. Come in there with tempo. Okay, knight c4. Yeah, looks like a natural move. Let's do it. Thanks, Hagar. Hopefully we'll get a game next time. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what you're trying to explain, the ice pick. <laughs> no, that was not dating-induced. That was John and his sleep-induced something, something or other. Okay, I'm on the b7 pawn. Now, my dark square bishop is super nice in these positions, just controlling c7 and b8. I always got to be careful, like, gesturing with a piece like this. I've done that before and accidentally dropped it on those squares. Be very cautious, guys. <laughs> okay, b6. Uh, c6 could be played. Don't really mind a trade in the center, so maybe knight e5. Let's hop. Hop with the knight. They're called springers in German for a reason, right? <laughs> John, do you prefer the two bishops more in long time controlled chess? Um, ooh, I have a nice tactic here. Yeah, I usually do. I like the bishop pair. I like to milk the bishops. From that Kramnik school of chess. This was the idea. Always got to be on the lookout for the knight fork distance, guys. Someone was asking what my favorite players were from the past, present, and future. And two guys, I mean, they're still around, but basically retired. Uh, Karpov and Kramnik both had a major influence on my chess development. So I could play knight e7 here and then go take f5. I could even play queen takes f5, funnily enough, although then he could play queen takes c6. But if I want to continue this theme, queen takes f5 is nice. But let's play the clinical move. Yeah, for sure. If you guys know of good streamers in North America who might be interested in banter blitz, let us know. We got myself and LaFong at the moment. Hmm. I didn't realize taking here would open this bishop. So I can't recapture without losing the rook on a1. So what to do then? Because he is on that a couple times. Maybe bishop e5? Let's play that. I should have played queen takes f5. That would have been nicer.
Yeah, definitely. Gotta love Magnus' games for Twitch. I posted this on Twitter the other day, but he just makes the nearly impossible look routine. It's amazing. I mean, this 100-game streak, undefeated streak that he's on right now, I feel like we didn't even really start to hear about this until the Isle of Man tournament, you know? Okay, people who are truly in the know were aware that Magnus had an undefeated classical streak going, but we're just so accustomed to seeing him post amazing results and going through tournaments unscathed, not losing a game, that it just seems so expected. <laughs> And that's the mark of greatness right there. People who make the exceptional look completely normal. And you come to anticipate that from them. Okay, so still up a piece here and a pawn. Little behind on the clock, but everything looking good. If he trades e5, then he'll have to worry about queen g6 ideas. The queen is lurking. I could play queen g6 here too. Bishop d3 is another option, but how does he defend against this actually? Special, well, okay, you can play queen f8. That's the only move. Do I have an artistic way to end this? Bishop d3 would not be artistic. Let's play f4. And if king h8, I have queen takes h6. So I'm just going to hammer the f pawn in here. <laughs> I don't even want that rook. He's adamant. Okay, we'll take finally. All right, Baldus, thank you for the game. Yeah, got you with a little bit of a trap there, but I think it was trending in White's favor at this point. A lot of pressure on the queen side here. I think you probably should have gone for for knight h5 earlier. So, yeah, I think if you're going to play this h6, g5 plan, got to make a commitment to play this and go after that bishop right away. All right, thank you guys. Good session today. I managed to escape without a loss or a draw. So come harder next time, guys. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> but I've been doing these banter blitzes on a weekly or every other week basis at the moment. So I'll probably see you guys perhaps next weekend. So once again, thank you all for tuning in on Chess24, YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. Thank you, guys. And enjoy your weekend. Bye.